LM317. Perhaps one of the most popular microchips ever created, despite being developed back in 1976. But this old timer isn't in a hurry to retire, and there are reasons for that. The LM317 is a linear voltage regulator chip. It is time tested, not fussy, costs pennies, has a simple connection scheme, and can also work as a current stabilizer. It has internal protection against short circuits and overheating. It provides a fairly large output current in amperes. Add to all this a wide range of supply voltages and quite high stability of the output voltage. It is precisely because of these advantages that the chip is still popular today. It is a general purpose stabilizer and can be used for a wide variety of purposes. In laboratory power supplies, in LED drivers when current needs to be limited, and as a reference source. A circuit using the LM317 in the network more. The purpose of this release is to create a comprehensive material that will explore the capabilities of this chip. Naturally, we cannot cover all the ways it can be used, so I will present only the most popular, as well as some unconventional but interesting ways to incorporate this chip. So, we know that the chip has three pins. Input, output, and the adjustment pin, or control pin. It includes its own reference source. An output stage based on a bipolar transistor, and a protection unit for current and overheating. The chip operates in linear mode and can dissipate about 20 watts in standard configuration, but it all depends on cooling and the type of casing. There are more powerful versions, the LM350 and ON338. The connection scheme is no different from the junior counterpart, but the last two options provide an output current of 3 and 5, respectively, but we will not consider them. In any case, linear mode implies heating of the power element. The greater the difference between the input and output voltage, the more the heating. Therefore, the chip requires a heat sink. A classic voltage regulator on the LM317 looks as follows. The chip monitors the output voltage through a resistive divider and compares it with the reference. By changing the resistance of the divider resistors, we have the ability to change the output voltage. In the current regulator circuit, exactly the same thing happens except a current sensor is installed instead of a divider. The more current consumed by the load, the greater the voltage drop that will form on this sensor. This drop is monitored by the chip and, again, compared with the reference. Based on this, the chip increases or decreases the output voltage until the current at the output is stabilized at the required level. In reality, the entire mention process occurs in a very short time, you could say instantly. This is a stabilizer, and even if the output is short-circuited, the output current will remain stable at the set level. The calculation of the output current is done according to the specified formula. For current adjustment, powerful wire wound variable resistors can be used. As mentioned earlier, the chip has overload protection as well as thermal protection. For the short circuit protection system, there is a current sensor inside the chip. The protection system monitors the drop on this sensor. If the drop exceeds the norm, the protection will activate. One and a half amperes is, of course, quite a bit, but what if more current is needed? There are at least two options for increasing the output current of the chip. Parallel connection of several chips, or the introduction of an additional power transistor. The second circuit works in a simple way. When the output current is small, the load is controlled by the LM317 itself. But if the load consumes a large current, the power transistor comes into play. From now on, all the current going from the input to the load will flow through the power transistor. The principle of operation of this circuit is based on the previously mentioned process. There is a current sensor selected in such a way that when the output current, for example, exceeds 1A, the voltage drop across it is sufficient to turn on the power transistor. The disadvantage of this option is that the internal short circuit protection will no longer work. In another option, several integrated circuits are connected in parallel. The total output current is equal to the sum of the currents of all the integrated circuits. The integrated circuits are not connected directly, but through low resistance resistors to balance the currents. In this case, unlike the first one, the short circuit protection continues to work. So short circuits are not a threat to such a stabilizer. 
Of course, as the current increases, so does the heat dissipation, so make sure to provide good cooling. If you need a powerful, highly stable, adjustable power supply, this option is perhaps the simplest and most budget friendly. The internal reference source of the microchip has a voltage of N. Therefore, when designing laboratory power supplies, it is necessary to consider that the minimum output voltage will not be lower than this value. But what if you want the ability for full adjustment from zero? Manufacturers suggest adding a negative voltage source of 10W. For these purposes, in addition to the main winding, you need to wind another one with the appropriate voltage on the power supply transformer and connect everything as shown. Alternatively, assemble a negative voltage source that will be powered from the main winding. In general, there are many options. However, such a power supply will allow for full adjustment of the output voltage from zero. By the way, about the output voltage, the technical documentation for the microchip includes a formula for calculating the output voltage. Based on just one LM317 microchip, you can build a small charger that can charge a battery to the set voltage, and the charging current can be limited by selecting the resistance of the specified resistor. Such a charger is suitable for charging most small capacity batteries. The maximum charging current is limited by the output current of the microchip in A. As mentioned earlier, the LM317 microchip operates in linear mode, which means heating and low efficiency. But, in datasheets, there is a schematic of a switching step-down regulator where the microchip functions as a pulse generator and an additional power element in the form of a bipolar transistor is added to the circuit. This circuit has high efficiency due to pulse conversion. The function of adjusting the output voltage is retained and the output current reaches up to 3A. During the measurements I apply to the input of this regulator. 20 volts in set 15 at the output. With an output current of 3 amperes, the input consumption was about 50. What? And 46 at the output. The efficiency was approximately 88%. Undoubtedly, this is a very good indicator. At the same time, the transistor and the microchip do not heat up much. It's bearable to the touch. But it is necessary to mount them on a common heatsink and insulate the substrates from the heatsink with thermally conductive pads. The no load current of the regulator is only 10 mA. Voltage adjustment from V. The maximum output voltage will be 1V less than the input. Any PNP bipolar transistor with a collector current, preferably from 10A. It is preferable to use Schottky diodes in the converter circuit. In my case, regular ultrafast diodes were used. A pair of them are connected in parallel to increase the total current. The recommended inductance of the choke is 600 microhenries. In my case, the inductance is about three times less, around 200 microhenries, but everything works perfectly. The choke can be wound on a toroidal core made of powdered iron. The necessary rings can be found in computer power supplies. I emphasize again, the material should be powdered iron. Ferrite is not suitable here. The LM317 like any other stabilizer of a similar type, contains a comparator and an output stage inside, which represents nothing other than a current amplifier. If you look at the schematic of an audio frequency amplifier, you will find that the same principle is embedded in them. A stage for voltage amplification and an output stage for current amplification. Audio enthusiasts have not overlooked this, and you can find audio amplifier schematics based on the LM317 online. Such an amplifier sounds Something like this.
I even took the time and did it. Measurement of the amplifier's output power. Measurement conditions. A 4-ohm load in the form of a resistor is connected to the amplifier's output. In parallel with it, a multimeter and AC voltage measurement mode and an oscilloscope. Amplifier power supply, 12 volts. A 1 kHz sine wave from a signal generator is fed to the input. Increase the amplitude until clipping occurs and record the maximum voltage on the multimeter. I got about... volts. Then, a simple formula calculation shows that the maximum power on a 4 ohm load was about watts. Not much, but the sound quality is quite decent. No distortion, solid bass. The amplifier reproduces classical music excellently. The downside is the low efficiency, but for this class, it's normal. Well, I guess that's enough. All necessary links, including the link to the project archive with printed circuit boards and the presented schematics, can be found in the description below the video. Don't forget to rate the video if it was helpful, share it with friends, and I guess that's all. And with that, I can only say goodbye. As always, this was Kazian K, with you, until we meet again. Bye.